stream. Wow. Thank you. Thank you, opening act. How's everyone doing? Man, I am tired today. I woke up so early today, guys. It's Friday today? Oh, yeah. Not bad. Draylo, thank you so much for the Prime. Wow. Ryan, thank you so much for the Prime as well. Oh, my God. Wow, wow, wow. Happy Friday, Mr. Toes. Oh, my God, finally. Tomorrow's going to be nice. I have, like, tomorrow kind of to myself. Man, I plan to just kind of sleep tomorrow. Honestly. I, Hunter, thank wow, you so much wow, for your Prime wow. as well. Happy Friday, Mr. Toes. <laughs> wow. Thank you, guys. Appreciate you guys. I really do, man. You guys are way too kind, dude. Thank you guys for the hype train. Uh, I want to know what board the dual shot keycaps are mounted on. This is the Envoy. Although my camera doesn't like the Envoy for some weird reason. Um, hi, first time in stream. Uh, um, first time in stream. Love your sonnet vids. So co copped on myself. I can't wait for uh, it into September. Would you recommend uh, a good tactile switch with nice tactile feedback? I mean, a good tactile switch right now for me. I think you might as well just go with the, what are they called? Oh gosh. Not Holy Pandas. Why am I blanking on this? Oh God. Guys, what is the switch? Yeah, the Boba U4Ts. Why, how did you know that first of all, Trudeau? Trudeau's reading my mind right now. Yeah, I just, I think this is probably the only other tactile switch that I could possibly say that I personally like, so. Ebo Maker, um, I don't even know how to pronounce that. Or Ajaz Kiwis. Yeah, so the, okay, I, I think it's Ajaz that actually makes some really good switches. They have those fruit switches that are actually pretty good. So I recommend Alex, them too. Alex, you were the date three days ago. Go look on what date that was. Alex, you were the date three days ago? It's October 10th? Wednesday? Alex, you were the date three days ago? Ten to ten? Oh my dude, I would have never actually I would have never like put two and two together that it was ten out of ten. You're too big brain for the joke. No, you know what it is? I don't really refer to the, the calendar as like ten ten. I just I I think like October or like September or something. God damn. That's very kind of you, Kenny. Kenny, what's the progress of the uh, the board? Ajaz Peaches on my alphas and Kiwis on my mode. I like the Ajaz Peach. They're pretty good. Are those the ones that came in the can that you had to open? Do, do you remember? Am I thinking of the right thing? I can't, I can't remember. Yeah, those are cool. All right, quick little rundown of what's happening tonight. Today is a sponsored stream from Desk Hero. It is sponsored, but obviously like all my thoughts are my own and stuff. Um, I actually have built already a Fuji on my own time. Uh, I would say probably three or four weeks ago. Basically what was going on was Desk Hero has a lot of Fuji 65 extras. He confided in me and trusted me to like test it out, see if I liked it. I actually did like it. I thought it was a pretty good board. Uh, it's a top mount board. So my recommendations there are probably gonna go something like a plastic plate. Um, so we did a little bit of testing, see what the best config is. And he's done a really good job. Uh, Desk Hero has done a great job of like creating these cool little packs if you guys want something that's going to be fun for the Fuji. Um, and I think there's also one other really important thing, which I don't remember how to switch back to USD on this website. <laughs> so you're going to have to bear with me. Uh, but if you guys did want, there are sales happening for in stock keycaps, like the GMK sets, if you buy a Fuji. I believe some of them are like 35 to 50% off uh, if you buy a Fuji kit. So some decent sales and there's like stacking discount codes that work with it too. So just a little synopsis of what's kind of happening. We're gonna be building one today and we're gonna try a different set of everything. So I did one with the Owl Labs uh, switches inside, but we'll try something else. The bundles look nice. Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty decent sale if you're looking to buy one whole gigantic kit of something. like. It's a pretty much like a, a keyboard you can pretty much assemble yourself if you buy the kit. 
dude, Dual Shot's nice. I think it looks really good with this color too. I didn't expect this to work. I just had this set lying around and I was like, let's see what this looks like. I'm pleasantly surprised with it. All right, so, so um, Desk Hero's offering like mixed color sets of like the top and bottom being, what he, I think what they're dubbing like swirl. I'm just gonna build the white one today and then we're gonna change up some of the colors on it depending on how we like it. So we'll just go from there. Now, I never actually had the pleasure of building a Fuji when it came out. I feel like it was a while ago. I don't remember the exact launch of a Fuji, uh, the 65. So I, I, it is a V2, it is a V2 guys. Sorry, did I, I put V2 in the title. I don't, I don't really recall uh, when it came out. Still enjoying a uh, dual shot though. I'm glad sync. Fuji from 2021. Yeah, I never built any of the versions of Fuji's. Like not a single one. And I always kind of wanted to, but I remember no one gave me a Fuji to try. Uh, I love your camera setup. Looks so clear. Thank you. I appreciate that. I do, I do. Thank you very much. All right. <laughs> now, I'm gonna build the white one here. Let's actually take this apart first. Okay, wanna know a little secret, guys? There was this keyboard, and there was like two other keyboards that back in the day, when people were reviewing them, I low-key was so jealous of other people doing these boards because a little part of me wanted to do it just because I really wanted to like take photos of uh, like the board with the mountain on it and stuff like that. I thought it was so cool looking. I did already open this one here once. That's why it's kind of open. But no one gave one to me to, to look at, so I was kind of jealous. Uh, yeah, these are all in stock. These are all pretty boards, to be honest. I love the way they look. Yeah, they were always simple top mount boards. Like, I, I'm gonna tell you guys right now, it's, if you're into side profiles, this is pretty no frills. They're not really a crazy side profile. It's a pretty simplistic top. Got the badge. I think that's kind of, this comes from a different era. Like, I know this sounds crazy, but like two years ago, badges were all the, the, all the rage. You had to have a badge on your keyboard. Still don't understand why, but badges were the thing. Uh, I think there's different badges on different units of the Fuji. So just double check which one you're picking up. But yeah, they were the thing, dude. I think 6.5 V2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It kind of does remind me a little bit of the Think. I think the Think had a little bit more embellishing to it, like a little bit more like detail added to the board. Do you guys still like badges though? My new board has the same two piece weight uh, type thing. Yeah, I mean, this is a pretty, like it's a pretty easy thing to not fuck up a top mount. The Fuji doesn't sound bad at all. There is some stuff that I would recommend, like if you're gonna be building one of these boards, it, it doesn't quite follow some of the new design trends I feel like I would not use the aluminum plate. I would probably pick up something plastic. Also, if you pick up something plastic, um, it's unfortunate, but I guess back in the day, uh, two years ago, three years ago, whatever it was, it wasn't thought to put, you know, the mounting points over here. They put a mounting point right underneath the space bar. I ended up not putting this on my original Fuji build that I built a few months ago, or I guess like, yeah, two months ago now. Um, it just helps a lot with the space bar sound and more so the feel of the space bar, like it's less fatiguing. So that's going to be my one recommendation there. Sometimes they seem super out of place. Uh, they make the board sexy. Sometimes I'm not into badges. Uh, okay. And I'm not saying it's just because we're doing this board. I've also said this in the past, so you can check me on it. I actually don't like badges. See how this badge follows the border over here? Like it allows this border to be clean. Some boards center the badge between this bezel. And I really don't like that. I like when the badge follows this bezel, like, and it 
Okay, does it make sense what I'm trying to say? I hate when boards center the badges. Hate it. Like, it's my number one pet peeve. Just leave it like this. It makes more sense to have the border one big, like, the same size. Does the forever... I don't remember which one the forever has. Um, but I really don't. I don't have a forever. It's not my personal yes. need to have. The blocker just needs to be in line with the rest of the border. I normally hate, hate when it's centered to whatever the bezel width here is. Also, Frish, thank you so much for the tier one for 11 months. God damn. Appreciate you, dude. It's symmetric. If it, if the, if the forever was symmetric, then yeah, I prefer the, the forever. The way the forever does things is perfect. All right. Got a little PCB, PCB by Frether. Frether's no stranger in the hobby. Been around a while too. Let's put things together. This is also not a daughter board as well. So there's no JST, nothing like that. You just slide it in. But yeah, I already have the, so today's stream is actually not gonna be as long. Um, we're gonna make it a little longer. I actually have a whole lot of stuff already pre-prepared for this build, uh, just by like happenstance. So, dude, I haven't used Oil Kings in a while. But okay, I got I got a little finding about Oil Kings, okay? I think I've said this once. Oil Kings are very, very inconsistent. Like the stock loop. There was like two or three of them in this pack that had an excess amount of lube. And then there was like, I would say half that felt okay by themselves. Like I probably shouldn't have, like I probably didn't need to lube them. And then the other half just felt bone dry. And in opening the other half, yeah, dude, there was like, like a spit drop, like a, not even a spit drop. There was like a, you know, when you're talking in a piece of split, spit flies, like that's how much lube was on this. And then there were some that were again, completely normal. And then there were some that had so much. So yeah, very inconsistent oil kings, but I hand lubed them all because, you know, I wasn't about to let the, I wasn't about to let that happen. I was not gonna let that fly. What did, you, what, what did you guys end up doing today? I am so, like today has just been the, I would probably say the slowest day for me in terms of how fast the day has gone by. I hate filming so much thanks to entertainment. Anytime, dude. You've been playing Apex? I'm kind of jealous. I low-key wanted to play some video games today, but I haven't had the chance to. Are you gonna try the Cherry MX2A switches? I want to say yes, but I'm also going to say that even if I do try them, I don't foresee me giving a shit about them. Does that make sense? Like, I don't foresee me caring that much about the cherry, to, uh, those new cherry switches at all. I really don't. FFFF stabs? Yeah, they're good. I've had a few packs. They're just Duroc stabs. I think they have a different material to them. They might be nylon, but I've, I've used them in the past. They're completely okay. The only reason I don't buy them anymore is because they're more of like a, a niche product in terms of colorway. So I haven't really had the chance to pick one up. Is this um, a 6.25 or, okay, we need to use, it's a fixed plate. Maybe the only other criticism I have about this entire board is it just has a fixed plate. <clears throat> no, you're not that late. We're just, we're gonna take our time building everything. Like we have to solder things in and all that stuff. And I need to get, let me do one stab here. I need a 6.25 wider. Actually, do I have one right here? Might not even need to get up. Never mind. Spooky keyboard? Oh shit, it's Friday the 13th? I apologize guys, I do have something kind of spooky but Halloween themed happening on Halloween but I didn't think to make anything spooky today. Hey, do you guys have any scary stories? Are we gonna, sh are we gonna share scary stories on Halloween? What's, hey, what is Friday the 13th again by the way? I know what like it is supposed to be scary. I have one, Mex and Co. God damn, Kenny. 
goddamn. Uh, make the light in the back green or orange for spooky vibes. Yeah, we can do that. Is it just the movie, Jason? That's it? I thought it was something different. The Knights were killed Octopus 13. <laughs> Disparage. <clears throat> yeah, well, this is something fun for, for Halloween day. I got you guys for Halloween. I don't know if I'm going to dress up. Oh, by the way, you know how I always stick up my tongue? Like when I'm focusing on like that type thing? My girlfriend actually looked it up today. Why I stuck, like why do people stick out their tongues while they're focusing? Apparently, according to her, and apparently according to Google, people stick out their tongues while they're focusing. It's to stop your tongue from doing other things. Okay, it's the stupidest reason ever, and I thought she was calling me dumb, to be honest. But apparently you use less brain power uh, if you hold your tongue in place. Like it's just one less thing your brain needs to worry about. <laughs> when she told me that, I was just, I don't know, man. I didn't know whether to be insulted or like proud that my body's doing something efficient. I don't know, dude. I'm still, I still don't know how I feel about it. I really don't know, dude. Brain meta, brain can't multitask. Is that, is that like true? Uh, have you found the hobby has slowed down since 2021? It's a bit depressing. No, the hobby is not slowed down. You know what's slowed down? Okay. Here is my theory. I feel like the hobby is the same. There's still the same amount of people. There's less um, excitement for new products because obviously less people have time to stay home all day and look at things because COVID's over. I feel like there is a big movement for in-stock products and a lot of people obviously care a lot about in-stock products right now and that's like the new big thing but with that also came the i'm gonna call it the race for the cheap keyboards for accessibility we'll call it we'll call this timeline the accessibility phase of keyboards all right we're currently still on it what i feel anyways is the accessibility phase of keyboards i feel like we're still here it's still a thing I don't know when the accessibility phase will go away. I think um, we're slowly getting back into like some cool designs, like more designer stuff here and there. I'm gonna turn on our fake sun. I look so tired, by the way. <clears throat> Woke up at like 6 a.m. this morning. I don't know when we're gonna be leaving this phase. <laughs> Bro, pitch boring. Um. But I was, you know what's funny? I'm gonna I'll talk to you. I was actually, I had a really fun conversation with Hippiotech today. Cause I wanted, you know, we were just chatting and then I got to see his perspective of what he thinks is going on in the hobby too. And I think he's sort of feeling the same way. Like he, he reviews totally different keyboards than I do. I do. Like he takes a look at completely different things. And me and him had one thing in common while we were talking, which was ball spin. Oh God, we haven't redeemed that in a while. We both kind of feel that right now, the hobby is... Hold on. You like that? Ball spins? Um, the hobby is in that point there. It's the accessibility point. It's not that fun right now, but it is kind of fun because a lot of people, and you know, he, he gave some good perspective on it too. A lot of people are buying perhaps their their board for the first time, which I thought was great, right? And I still think is great. I think group buys aren't doing as well these days, right? Because more people are starting to be a little bit more cautious about how they spend their money. I also think we might be feeling it's a little bit boring and hear me out, we just finished the summer and I feel like every summer, of keyboards, there's not much going on because you know why? People are outside. Um, so people don't really stay inside to, you know, play around with their keyboard. I think as the winter kind of settles in here, um, we'll probably see some more push for fun desk stuff, fun, you know, accessories, fun keyboard products. 
but yeah, just like Manic said, it's cooling down for sure, but I don't think it's dead. And um, I, I truly think that the keyboard will be, the keyboard scene will be like active again come January. You are gonna be coming out for Salt Lake uh, for KeyCon in April. KeyCon? They actually running a KeyCon in April? Hey, you know what? Regalicious, let me tell you this. Perhaps. I lubed the back of your remote switch recently. I was just wondering how you lube yours. Very, uh, I add just a little bit of lube, like very lightly, and I lube the springs too. But I don't, I don't go crazy. My lubing method is in my YouTube video as well. Do you know the difference between the premium and standard options for the Fuji? I believe it's just the polish. Yeah, like I, I'm gonna be honest. Okay, let me show you guys. This is the standard weight, I believe, and I kind of low key like this more. Like, I, I, I don't get me wrong, PVD is cool and stuff, but PVD is also fucking delicate in any keyboard. The PVD is good on this. I've, I think I've already like roughed it up a little bit. Yeah, I think I've even put a little bit of a scratch in this one here. I've, again, I, I've opened both of these. The PVD is good. Like, it's good. You can kind of see the parts where the dust is settled. And anyways, I don't, I'm not, I've never been in love with PVD. It's some people's things. I prefer stuff like this. Mike teased it on stream last week. Are, wait, are you gonna do it in Salt Lake City then? Hmm, it might be a fun excuse to go to Salt Lake. That might be fun. Yeah, PVD is usually a little bit more, but good PVD is expensive. It's, a, it's an aesthetic choice. That's all it is at the end of the day. Spank me, not keyboards, please. What? What? What are we spanking? And why are we spanking you, Spirit? Huh? Tim's not even here, guys. Tim is not even in this stream. Oh God, my throat. <clears throat> Tim's not even in this stream. Tim isn't even here, dude. Alex, I agree with him. <laughs> what the? Riley, Marcia, and I are all here. It would be fun if you did make it. Oh, dude, I, I probably, like, I most likely will. It's probably uh, an event that I probably would not want to miss. Acting all innocent? No, dude. Listen, I'm acting normal. Tim acts too sus when we're together. It's too sus. Um, what are your IEMs in the vid you talk about them? They're just super high quality headphones like AirPods. Um, so I think you mean these guys? These are called Campfire Audio Andromedas. Uh, I really like them. They're a bit older. As you can see, they're also kind of worn out a little bit. You can see the paint starting to chip out, but I kind of think that gives it some cool character. Um, I would say AirPods in general are a little bit more fun in quotation sounding. These are more balanced in my opinion and have a little bit more detail to them. Yeah, V-shaped or colored is what people call it, but like this is how the arc would be for the, like it'd be more like a U instead of a flat line, you know? So I don't know, I, I like these more. I, I don't mind AirPods, but you can tell there's definitely a difference in I think you would probably call it like resolution or just some detail that happens with some of the nicer headphones. However, I don't think you need to spend an arm and a leg to get into good IEMs, truth be told. I like my campfire ones just because they've also lasted me a long time and they seem like they're the best quality ones out of all the high end stuff that I've tried. But I do have some gripes with AirPods but I, I really like the AirPods in terms of just something that's a little bit more in the mid end of pricing and works. Honestly, I hate how my AirPod Gen 2 sound. You might be more into, like, are you not into bass? Yeah, like the Truth Ear ones are good, but if, if you want to spend some, some money on something really, really good in my opinion, um, Moondrop makes some good stuff, and depending on how, how how much budget you actually have, there's a whole world full of IEMs that's pretty good. 
you know, you can you can find a whole lot of good stuff in the IEM world. Take care, Regalicious. Yeah, man, I'll have to make it down, by the way. You have a good one with the fam, dude. You have a good one, my friend. <clears throat> Dumb question, though. What, what makes an IEM an IEM? It's called an in-ear monitor. So basically, I hope there's no earwax in here because that would be gross. There's none. Thank God, I keep my ears pretty clean. <laughs> These go inside your ear. I don't have my AirPods with me right now, but the the AirPod basically would be a little bit less shallow and these kind of go inside your ear and create a seal. So, God, this is like kind of difficult. Sorry, guys. So you can see they, they go more near your, your canal a little bit more. And when they create that seal, that also helps seal for like really good bass um, and also some noise isolation as well. Some sound isolation, or I guess noise isolation would be a better word. The quality of life of the AirPod Pros have ruined me. Async, I know what you mean. I know exactly what you mean, dude. What do you have powering them? I don't, uh, I'm a, I'm a changed man in the audio world, TPK. Um, I have, uh, I've seen the truth. Basically, amps and DAC, waste of money. All right, complete waste of money. If your computer has good isolation already, like it has good, like, you know, the, the DAC and that should just be completely fine. As long as you don't hear any, you know, buzzing from parts and stuff. And the amp, if it drives your headphones, you're fine too. The amp matters a little bit because depending on how much power your headphone actually needs, bro, honestly, I had a lot of the expensive equipment and one day uh, I had my brother you know, move things around. Tell you know, I was like, don't tell me which which one's which. I I literally got everything wrong, and I did not know which one was which. And that was the day I'm like, dude, all of this stuff is bullshit. Um, I had like three thousand dollar DAX, like playing all these different files. We tried so many different things. It was just for me, I could not hear a discernible difference. So, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of snake oil, bro. Thank you for all the content. Thank you, Therak. I really appreciate the tier one for 22 months, dude. That's a great experiment to run. It also makes you really value the, I guess, stuff you already have. Oh, 3D. I haven't actually gone through my stuff yet. 3D, I might open your package on Sunday. I have not, today was like way too busy. Did not go through any of my packages in the front yet. No rush. Thank you, man. I appreciate you. If your headset doesn't have high ohm, uh, amp is pretty useless. But you'll always, dude, oh, dude, the audio world is so crazy sometimes. Like, I do admit, like, sometimes you can notice, like, a good driver and a good, like, depending on the tuning, things can sound different. That's different, right? But when you're talking, to, when, dude, when I was in the audio hobby, the amount of weird snake oil shit, it was like, this DAC makes this sound faster. Like, it makes it resolve faster. I don't even know what that fucking means anymore. Like, it, 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 like this DAC like makes something resolve faster. This amp brought up this. And I'm just like, ah, oh, dude. You know what the craziest thing was? The craziest thing I think for me after, it was this was way after the whole me testing different headphones and stuff. At one point, I just said, you know what? I'm gonna do something that I haven't done in a while and download an EQ program. Do you know I got most of my headphones to sound exactly the same? Like, no different. Most of them sounded identical. All the high-end ones anyways. Some of them did have a little bit less bass, to be fair, but I feel like that was really about it, was like some bass difference. From my experience with Planar IEMs, I think they really do need a DAC amp. Well, they're a little bit more I do feel like they're a little bit more power hungry though. Audio snake oil is hilarious. I'm kind of hard into, wait, you're you're, you're uh, kind of hardcore into audio? Yeah, oh yeah, Desco, you you used to, um, long time ago, you were primarily audio, right? Like primarily. I 
can't remember what your brand was before Desk Hero, because I know you moved into it, but I remember buying something from you way, way back when. Oh, I, was it something cape? No. Hive Mind? Was it Hive Mind? I don't remember what it was called now. I believe it was Hive Mind, right? I, I was really into it. I did Hive Mind cables for. Yeah, yeah, it was Hive Mind. Yeah, yeah, look at that. I remember. That's pretty cool. There's a new Fuji. Um, kind of, not really. These are in stock units at Desk Hero, the V2s. I don't have a V1 to compare to. I don't really remember what the V1 was. My wallet needs time to prepare. I get that, dude. All right, look at this, pretty classic looking. Got a little carbon fiber with oil kings going on. Can't mess around with that, that's always nice. The stabs looks like little flowers. I appreciate that. Dude, I thought you were asking me thoughts on Loki, the new series. I'll have to say I haven't actually seen it, but the Loki 65 was good when I tried it. It's been a little while. I have to, I have to solder too though. I haven't done that yet. The stabs I didn't need to do today because I already had them pre-done. Remember yesterday when I fucked up and did two sets of stabs? <laughs> I just didn't want to waste stabs. Hey, let me tell you guys this though, right? I know your wallets need to break now, but I'm gonna give you guys a piece of advice, okay? Everyone listen up real quick. If you guys haven't done Christmas shopping, start now, please. It's, this is not even about your wallets at this point. Like obviously be responsible with your money. Save yourself the hassle of going Christmas shopping during late November and early December. It's not worth it. It's just headaches and you'll find more deals now. Or yeah, you could wait for Black Friday as well. But if you did want to go out, get, go now. Order online. Uh, I still prefer to shop in stores. I'm gonna be honest with you. Um, I, prefer, I much prefer it. Oh God, hiccups. Everyone get keycaps? Yeah, get your loved one a keyboard. I might actually do that this year. I might see if I can pick up something like, for a few people that don't have good keyboards, just my keyboard accessories. Maybe I can just like figure out some stuff I don't use and re-gift it or something like that. But like, I kind of want to do keyboard kits for some people, just for a few people that I feel like could use the upgrade. Alrighty, let's solder this together. What are the main differences between keycap sound profiles of GMK, Sarah Key, Ooh, okay, Seraki is very different. I haven't had the opportunity to try Seraki. Maybe some people in chat have, but I've heard that's a very high pitch sound and it might not be for everyone. It's um, almost glass-like. Um, aluminum, I have only tried once or twice. I didn't care for aluminum. They're, they're not my thing. I think that's more of a novelty product. And PBT, I would say, depending on the board, can sound really good. Uh, I find PBT to be more, I'm gonna use glassy again. Like they, they seem thin for some weird reason on certain keycap or certain keyboards. GMK just, I just feels like the most well-rounded and perhaps it's just the ABS blend that they use. Um, I don't know, I just, I just prefer it, honestly. I have a friend that's picking up some Syracuse for their birthday this week. They're pretty looking though. Tell you that much. I, I do think they're really pretty. Have had issues with legends? Really? Okay, I haven't heard that. It's funny, I actually wanted to buy myself a set, but I really, at the time anyways, I don't know if they've restocked now. They only had those really ugly blue ones. And I really did not want those. Sorry if you guys own the blue ones. They do have a particular sound though. Um, sound they're going for in mind though. I trust their judgment. Okay, okay. Give us updates on that though. I'm curious too. I have the Craze set of Cherokee V1. There's a good thought to them, but the Craze ones have a little bit more material on them and they clink together, which is a pain in my ears. Oh, seriously? Like they have, 
they have an issue where they're just too big for the keyboard? Or do they just wobble on the stems of the switches to the point where they hit one another? That's annoying. I didn't know that. I like the look of the wobble keycaps from Mode. Have you tried them? Yeah, okay, so Mode keycaps. I like them. I actually have a whole write-up on them. Um, because I felt compelled to write about something that was a new blend. Because it's a, it's a blend of... Um, I forget the actual percentage. I might have written about it, but it's a decent blend that actually sounds good. Um, I will say I still prefer GMK spacebars. Again, being truthful. But I don't think you'd be just disappointed by their, their material blend. It sounds pretty good. They're also really good quality too. Yeah, you might not like the big legends either. That's also very true. <laughs> Any switches that have caught your attention lately? The one that actually caught my attention, that I might get more of, are those Diamond Avalon switches. I actually really liked those. And then, the only other ones that I might pick up another batch of were those uh, Gateron Cat B2 inks. Where they have like an ink an ink uh, material housing to them. Those looked interesting, or those were interesting too. I've seen videos about the bottom row doing, uh, being uh, on the craze, being too close together, if I remember correctly. Oh, interesting. So the new ones should have that ironed out then. Guys, I don't know any other switches in this hobby at the moment that are any good though. Like, switches have been going through a bit of a boring phase. Those Diamond Avalon switches had to be one of the more fun things that I've seen. But there's not much else. A few batches of those switches too, but it's a struggle to find a single vendor that has all the ones I want in stock. Oh yeah, that's what I've been struggling with too. Actually, you want to know my order that I picked up? Hold on. I actually did buy some switches. Contrary to what everyone thinks too, I actually buy a lot of stuff. Um, I know some people have made comments like, oh, you get stuff sent to you. Actually, no, I don't. I, I buy everything. I make sure to support the vendors that way. Um, R&D KBD, R&D KBD. Okay, so I ordered 140 Gideron Milky Yellow Pro switches because I've been wanting to use Milky, Milky Yellows again. I've been itching to, to build a board with that, like a personal board. I, I, Milky Yellow's classic, dude. They're also not too crazy expensive either. And I also bought like 40 sets of stabs. Have I bought or sold on Mech Market? A long time ago, I've purchased on Mech Market. I have only ever sold, I think, one thing on Mech Market, which was a duplicate of a keyboard that I had picked up, because I picked up two. And then I ended up not selling to the user because the guy was sketchy as fuck. So I ended up keeping the board. Free cheeseburgers or free tacos? Free cheeseburgers. I'm sorry, man. Free cheeseburgers, I I'm... I'm more of a burger guy than I am a taco guy. Actually, you bring up a good point. Can I customize the burger every single day? In the taco? Because if I can customize the taco, maybe tacos. The trade history and stuff. I use Mech Market all the time and haven't been scammed yet. Yeah, I've never been scammed, thankfully, but I don't know. I would never go back to using it, though. I hate using trading platforms now. Depends on what you're looking for. Tacos are always customized. Hmm. I'll take an original taco, please. Wow. You're really going to do me like that? <laughs> oh, man. Burgers have too much range. Ash Keeps just started a sale today. Gideron Milky Pro is part of the sale. Wondering if I should get some. Um, I like them. I think what inspired me to get Milky Yellows again was that Allison 70 board that we did for that client. And I was like, oh, I miss these switches. So it, it made me inspired to pick up some, uh, some more Milky Yellows. Oops. So I'm here for the Milky Yellows. 
I eat out. What the? Moose. Here's a good one for you guys. Okay, here's a good question. Would you guys rather have um, a lifetime of fries or a lifetime of onion rings? And this is not just one meal. I'm talking like you have to have fries or onion rings with every meal. And they're both done well, exceptionally well. Oh, everyone's fries. Damn, no onion ring lovers? Was there two onion ring people? Okay. Fries go with everything. Do you get a lifetime of sauce of choice? I mean, you can still pick up whatever sauces you want, but you can't have, like if you pick fries, you can't pick onion rings ever again in your life. Man, I think I would, I think I might go for onion rings, man. Fries are good and all, but like a good onion ring kind of hits different. Any toothpaste or orange flavored chips lovers here? What? Toothpaste and orange ch juice flavored chips? What the? Hmm? Uh, Desk Hero, are you in chat? Do you, do you remember the difference between the V1 and V2 Fuji? Just to make it clear guys, this isn't the release of a keyboard. Like this is not a prototype. These are just in stock units that Desk Hero has. So I, I, gonna be honest, I did not do any research about the V1 because it wasn't supposed to be that type of uh, stream. And I can't really remember the V1 off the top of my head. It was never a board I built back in the day. Most regretful purchase made in this hobby. The Rukia. Uh, mouth wash flavored cookies. That's disgusting, dude. Any purchase from Mexico? Damn, dude. That's gonna be a joke for a while, I feel. Uh, you just had to dip into that bag? Mm-hmm. I have a Fuji City 5 FE still uh, sitting in the box. Have you not built it yet? Dude, I have a bunch of boards I still need to build. Not the Rukia. How do the colors of GMK affect the future shine slash sound? The colors of GMK? Well, I don't know if it would affect future sound at all, but uh, shine, I mean, depends on a few factors, like how oily your hands are. If you have, I would say, moderately normal hands, I suppose, the moderate amount of hand oils in them, keep your hands clean. It should last a little while before they get a little shiny. But I feel like I have pretty dry hands and mine have pretty much all shined up after I'd say four or five months of daily use. But not to a point where I'm like, ew, I can never use this anymore. Uh, I bought a board on a whim that I don't really want to keep. Was wondering if you want to give it away, whatever you want to do. Chudo, you want to give away a board? How about we do it for Christmas? Would you be down? We can do like a little Christmas uh, giveaway thing or maybe we can build it on stream for people, for someone on Christmas. I'll let you decide all the rules and all that stuff if you want to give away a board. <clears throat> whoa, 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 okay, okay, wait, wait. I really appreciate it, guys. I I only, uh, I, don't get me wrong, would like to, would like to give away everyone's boards. But how about this? If you guys do have things for Christmas, maybe this would be not part of my subathon stuff. Maybe we do some sort of charity thing. Uh, maybe like a charity stream and then we do something like that. Um, I actually will, I might be doing a charity stream on November 4th. So maybe we can do another one or something like that. Just like a, something to give back or I don't know. We'll figure out something. I need, I need to put some thought process into this. Yeah, maybe we do Discord. We can get back to just our like little Discord community there, but. Yeah, let me, let me think about the details about all this. Simon is doing Thoughtober giveaways if you have a key really burning a hole in your pocket. 
I'll also be doing some giveaways in the next 30 days. I haven't had have a set date on it, but here, I'll, I'll read you guys the giveaway stuff. And again, this is not sponsored. This is not like, I'm not reaching out to vendors. This is, everything here is primarily from me. Um, there's only one thing that I had to reach out because I wanted one more version. Uh, uh, you'll, you'll understand when I read it to you. Hold on, let me get that list up. Uh, that's not it. It is this one. Oh, did I put that in numbers instead? Here, I'll read you guys, uh, read you guys what we're going to be giving away here. Sorry, I keep pausing the keyboard build, but it's important to me. It's important to me that we do this. Oh God, I can't even remember where this was. Um, oh baby, I don't remember. Uh, did I not save it? I hope I did. Is it? Oh, yeah, I did. Okay. So I'm thinking about giving away these. There's actually more now that I need to add to this, but here's the list so far. Um, it'll be the Freebird, Estrada TKL kit, unbuilt, Lumen Key 75, um, Great Sword TKL, which I know a lot of you guys really liked. Dude, Kai, I appreciate you. Happy Friday the 13th. Thank you, Kai. I appreciate you so, so much for the uh, three months of being here in the Prime Sub. Really do. Uh, a QK60, an RU65, a Cycle 7, a Sin65, um, the mode, a brand new Mode X Alex Envoy, a Haven TKL, and then there's like five or six more that I'll be adding to this list. Um, so those will be the giveaway units that I do on, I, I don't know exactly what day. But there's some pretty good boards there that I think everyone's gonna really like. And I'll probably throw in a few more, like I said. <clears throat> no, no orange shorts. Cycle and Alex mode. Yeah, there's some pretty fun ones in there. I, I try to do these giveaways like once every six months. The last one we did was in think the spring so now we'll do one for the winter my favorite GMK set I feel like that's ever-changing you know I'm still gonna stick by one of my uh, my old classics Nautilus but lately I don't know I've been really vibing with Kaiju no new moon tower meme no no moon tower although Maybe I could reach out to Chandler and beg him to give me a moon tower so we can do like a fun giveaway. Or maybe I can just buy one from him. And then I'll give it away or something. Both classics. How do you feel about grapefruit flavored stuff? I like it, but it has to be done right. Like I feel like that can be either really acidic or just really good, nice and sweet. Do you know when you're gonna review the loop? Um, I did ask about it soon question mark that's all i got that's all i can really share because i don't even have a dedicated date for that yet chandler from mr beast no 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 not that that'd be cool to do mr beast to keyboard that would be neat <clears throat> i want to know how to solder desolder for my next high-end board any tips on Oh, or should I practice beforehand? Dude, this is the easiest thing. Ready for this? Heat your iron up. I do about 330, 340 for temp um, Celsius. You're gonna wanna put your iron and press against the pin. Once it's pressed, just insert a little bit of the solder. Let it flow. Even if it's not a pyramid like you see online, don't stress, just move on. If you, if you need to add a little bit more, put a little bit more but it should just be a quick little motion. It flows, you pull away. It flows, you pull away. That's how you're gonna kind of learn to see how much solder you actually need to put into these things. Flows, pull away. Easy peasy. Uh, another small tip, this is a little bit more maybe advanced. You, when you solder one leg down, like we just did over here, if you wanna make sure the switch is like picture perfect, you're gonna press down on the switch with your thumb. 
flow the solder, push, hold. Let the solder solidify, I guess is the right word. And you should have a switch that is perfectly flush against the PCB. That's what I tend to do on boards that I really need to make sure the switches stay in place if they tend to wobble a bit on the plate. <clears throat> oh, dude, yeah, you gotta be careful with how much solder you put in. Technically, solder freezes. Oh. That's an interesting way to look at it, actually. That's all you need to do, though. You don't need to go crazy. It's, it's actually very easy. You don't need much solder. Simon has a good tutorial. He's also super shaky hands and it shows almost anyone can do it. Yeah, me and, me and Simon have pretty much the exact same type of shaky hands. Um, what I have noticed though, is getting a good iron makes a difference. All right? So see how there's not much? If anything, there's no solder splatter at all. When I wasn't using the Hako, I had a cheap, like a cheaper iron, the TS100, and I would, I would see that solder splatter would be everywhere. Finding the right temperature that works for you is also really important. Um, so you can see the solder is pretty nice. This might take a few bit of practice to get those like nice little pyramids that you see some people have, which I don't think is really important to be honest. But keeping your PCB clean is pretty important. Um, so a good iron will go a long way. The re Ooh, Jesus. The reason it goes a long way, power like surged through my camera there. Um, the reason it goes such a long way is just consistent temperatures. Don't please, don't make a joke. We're trying to be adults here, okay? This is an adult. This is like adult talk, okay? This is the solder tip is a little bit more consistent and stays hotter uh, when you're soldering. So the tip of the iron. Uh, doesn't fluctuate as much on higher end or nicer soldering irons. Um, with cheaper irons, the transfer of heat into the solder joint could fluctuate and then it causes like the solder, to, I don't know, it's like a weird reaction. I, th I remember reading about it. I don't remember what it's exactly called, but it can dip to like 300 Celsius and then tries to rise up and it causes it to like move, like splatter basically. Um, so you want to make sure that you're your iron is good quality. That way there, the tip doesn't fluctuate in temperature. That's all I gotta say. I'm gonna stop using the word tip now. Do I have to hold on to each switch to make sure they stay flushed in? No, you can do that beforehand. That's why you see me do this to all my switches beforehand. Um, and don't use a single temp. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely get an adjustable iron. My, my advice to you is if you do end up this is, this, I think this is really important advice. This is maybe advice that people won't tell you. Because they, they either want to make sure that you, you know, it's just like you're just happy with your purchase, obviously. But in the long run, I, I would say the one tool that is good to have is a good soldering iron. You would be shocked to how many times you're probably going to use that iron in your life. Not just for keyboard stuff. The only things I've repaired with this iron too. So if, if you, if the one tool, if there's one thing in the, if you're building keyboards that you're willing to invest in, I would say a good iron. It can go a long way and it'll last you a long time too. So the best tool around is your judgment giga chad. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Uh, have you ever thought about designing your own board? I would love to do that, but I don't even know where to start. I've made sketches and stuff. But I think I would need to actually work with someone because I have tons of ideas that I'd want to incorporate. And it would probably be a big task. The next thing I'm trying to focus on is making orange shorts for you guys. Which doesn't sound as cool, I understand that. It definitely isn't as cool. Okay, why isn't this, okay, whatever. But orange shorts are the next thing. I'd buy the board. Appreciate you guys. It's been an hour and I'm done 20 switches. You know, today was one of the few days where I feel like I got through lubing switches relatively fast. The Alex board have five uh, ribbon cables and five mounting points under the space bar.
I would create a new type of cable. It would be a hybrid between ribbon cable and a thread of string. <laughs> so that would be my new hybrid, okay? Yeah, yeah, and not only would it have flex cuts, every single key, every single key would be like a puzzle piece you have to put together. Um, so it would just be added fun, It'd like double as a puzzle, you know? And they'd be held together with hopes and dreams, nothing else. Yeah, and then I would make a daughter board, but it would be the same size as the main PCB, uh, just for funsies. Point eight, try point six. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> then my keyboard would fall apart. That's the goal, hopefully. You ever see those TikToks <laughs> where it's like they're trying to sell you something, but they're they're using some generic song and that AI voice, and it's like an overseas company being like, this design is very human. And it's, that's how I would describe my board. It would be very human. Very, very human, dude. That's end game. True end game. No worries. If it's a secret, but any ideas what mounting style you'd want? Oh, serious answer? Um, I don't know. I'd maybe want to try and experiment with new things. I don't know though. I haven't, I haven't put too much thought into that. Someone dropped something upstairs. Alex, I'm excited for you to try these uh, those switches in the arc. Kenny, what am I using for you again in the arc? I don't remember now. All right, I'm not gonna screw in this one here, guys. Like I said, I did experiment with the Fuji Desk Hero. Let me try one out like a month and a half, two months ago. And I did find that putting something there did not really improve my uh, it's not really great for the spacebar experience, so I just took it out. Um, maglev mounted board. I don't think magnetic boards are the future. I think it's novel, and I think it's just a fun way to assemble your board. SB star bottom, Zaku stem, cherry top. Jeez, what do you call them? What are those? What are they even called? Did you did you dub the switches a name? So there's been a few maglev keyboards that have come into IC and none of them ever get anywhere close to like, I think even prototype ready. So I think there's just issues with all of them. So you gotta be a little bit careful with that. It's the only odd thing about the Fuji is you kind of have to line this up correctly for the top frame here. And then we'll play around with mixing the tops and bottoms because that's what uh, Desk Hero is offering. I think he's calling them swirls. <sighs> Watching these streams is inspiring me to build a solder board next. It's fun, it's super easy. Look, look, let me show you guys. Not only is it super easy, but it's so rewarding to look at this and be like, hey, I actually did this myself. It's really rewarding too. Ultimately, too, it gives you a lot more freedom to how you want to build your board. Personally, I also feel like it makes the board feel more complete. So just my personal thoughts there. I don't actually have Fuji. I, do I have Fuji? No, I don't got Fuji. I don't have GMK Fuji. I think I have a PBT version of it somewhere. Adjust stabs. So ideally, when you're doing a solder board, you're gonna to wanna to use a set of stabs that you can kind of touch up before and after. My theory with stabilizers, and it's why I don't really go for the uh, QMX ones or any stabs that just have like a, a closed system. I like the idea of being able to mod my stabs afterwards. Ensuring installations correct should be in the number one priority and that's during the build. But, with the majority of stabs you can use like TX, even Stabies and Cherry and Duroc and some other brands like Gatoron, pretty much every single one of those you can go in and tune afterwards. 
And what I mean by that is simply this. You can actually, I like to grab the stem holder. You can pull up on this and then you should be able to see, I know I don't have the cameras set up for this, but you'll be able to see the wire. You can see it's right there. And then you should be able to, if you really want to, inject lube inside. Just a little bit. And then if you even forget to lube these guys here, you can do that post install. Yeah, I got a uh, desk here, I have some. I'm gonna try without first because I actually haven't tried these switches with the carbon fiber in this yet, but I have lots of polyfill. Dude, the crazy thing is, Desk Girl, I bought one bag of polyfill like four years ago. And I feel like even though I've used it in many, 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 many boards, I feel like the amount of polyfill inside the bag of polyfill hasn't moved at all. That one bag is actually an insane amount. <laughs> so it just like regenerates. It repopulates inside there. Uh, no, these are not stock oil kings. I do personally not, not like stock oil kings. I know that might rub some people the wrong way, but there are very few switches I like stock. Very, very few. I know, I'm trying to be careful. Insta, you know what I get like nervous touching these syringes now? I'm afraid they're gonna, I'm not gonna say it out loud actually. I don't wanna like manifest it into place. It sounds too sus. Hey, <laughs> sport. <laughs> I remember when you touched the tip and it squirt. Okay, you know what? Why did I read that out loud? What's wrong with me, man? What is wrong with me? Ooh, don't ooh after you've done that. Come on. <sighs> Alex, what is my favorite silent linear switch? Ooh. Okay, hands down, heartbeat switches. I have yet to try a better silent linear than heartbeats. Correct me if I'm wrong. Maybe you guys have some different suggestions for silent linears. Heartbeats are kind of insane. In fact, I, I have been itching to do a silent build for myself because they're actually that good. Silent alpacas are pretty good too. I feel like they're a little bit mushier than the heartbeats. Heartbeats are insane. I gave my dad a set of heartbeat switches because he also likes silence and he loves them. Actually, I gave him a pair, a set of uh, silent tactiles recently too. Um, Bento might look really good on this. What do you guys want to use for keycaps? Bento might look fun. I don't think I actually have any of the sets that, actually, let me see. I don't think I have many sets that Desk Hero is offering except for Bento and Mizu. I don't even know if he's offering Mizu with his because he has some stuff that he's offering. So if you guys didn't know, Desk Hero is running a sale on these. This is a sponsored stream. Does not affect my thoughts on the Fuji at all. Um, but Desk Hero did send over this board for me to take a look at. And he has a sale going on for the board plus uh, a GMK set. I think you get 50% off the GMK set. I don't think I have any matches that he has. I actually don't own any of these sets. God damn, there's so many GMK sets these days. I might use Bento. Fuji with Fuji. I actually don't have Fuji. You guys want me to use Mizu? Okay, oh, yeah. you guys want me to use Mizu? Mizu or Bento? Bento. Bento. You guys can pick. I haven't used Mizu, Mizu in a long time because Mizu is sitting nice, gracefully on my uh, Suse. Here, I'll do a, I'll do a vote. Slash poll. Set. Mizu, Bento. But yeah, the only thing I, I would say that it's, it's weird because this is such a simplistic keyboard. The only real issue that I think that Fuji actually has is during the assembly, um, you kind of have to angle the USB-C in. So that could make it rather difficult for someone who, do, who doesn't really know that and you have run the risk of potentially damaging your USB-C. 
But if you know what you're doing, then that should never be a problem. But it's just a classic top mount at the end of the day. So it's not, it's not quite difficult to build, nor is this like, complex at all. Are you guys really making the votes even? I was looking at TTT Frozen Silence. Actually, you know what else is really good for silent too? Costbox makes some good silent switches, I believe. You could try them. Uh, you guys are something else with splitting the votes. I feel like this happens more often than it should. <laughs> it really does. Here, actually, I'm gonna show you guys something while we wait for this. Where did I stick it now? I don't know when I'm building this, probably in the next few days. I'm just gonna not schedule it and just build it one day. I actually don't know who's vendoring this though. I need to ask Matrix. <laughs> Bento is best though. Just gonna skip through the accessories. You guys don't need to see that. What switches do you recommend for the Envoy? I like long poles or cherry switches for the Envoy. So this is Matrix, Matrix's new keyboard, the Alice. I can't remember what it's actually called. I haven't done any research on this. I'm just showing you guys. This is not the stream for this, so no one get upset with me. So I'm just gonna open this now. It's like the... Mr. Hat or something like that. I don't remember what it's called. It's a pretty crazy looking, uh, <laughs> I mean, I think this is really cool looking. I've always been in the Matrix uh, aesthetic. I mean, Matrix is big on their skeleton plates. You know, you guys know that. Pretty cool. I'm excited to build this guy. You know what I found fake? Not a lot of people vote. It, when, I, when we do votes, but then everyone always does prediction gambling. It's crazy. And it's an interesting looking board. I'm kind of pleasantly surprised with the way this looks. Uh, I actually don't find skeleton plates to be that detrimental to... Oh, you guys literally split the vote. All right, here's what's going to happen. Desk Hero, what, what would you like me to use on today's build? I am not, I am not butchering two of my keyboards to do this. Uh, Bento, please. Tatooine, yeah, should we just use Tatooine? Should we just use a Star Wars set? Half, half. Do you guys actually want me to do half, half? Also, other plates in that board, by the way, they're not skeleton plates, in case you guys were wondering. I'll, I'll just do half-half, fuck it. You guys want half-half? I'll do half-half. Let me just put this away. I'll just do half-half, dude, fuck it. Let me get all the sets. One moment. We'll call it Mento. I think Mento is a good name. Here's the bento part of bento. today for some weird reason. Rip Suse? I know, dude. All right, next question. What side goes where? Nine, I thank you so much for the tier one. I appreciate that. Huh. One year? It's already been a year. God damn, Nine Eye. Mizu left? No, we don't. Alternate rolls would be silly. We do split it like this. Mizu or, ben, or, or Bento and then Mizu or Bento.
What do you guys want? Okay. Are we doing it alphabetically? That makes sense. I actually appreciate that. Let's do it alphabetically. Oh, and the other one thing that I will say about um, the Fuji. I don't know if there's aftermarket plates for this. The PCB supports it. It's just the plates that it came with don't support a lot of uh, different things here. So the plate is rather limited on choices, but I'm pretty positive you can get aftermarket stuff for this. Who gets the honor of being the space bar? I'm gonna pick Mizu as the space bar. Or actually, yeah, I'll choose Mizu as the space bar. I think Mizu gets the honor of being the space bar. Luther, thank you so much for the tier one. I really appreciate your guys' support, by the way. As always, guys. So what do we stop at? Do we stop at like the number six? No, we stop at like number five, I think. Try both of them. I mean, realistically, they both should sound the same. I kind of like Mizu on this though. This looks great with Mizu. No, I do one more. Thoughts on the Fuji 65 so far? Um, it's really easy to build. There's not really much to it. Uh, the only two, well, there's one I'd say fundamentally meh thing about it, which is the, I mean, can't do nothing about this right now, but um, the USB-C, although it's nice there, I, I don't like the way it has to angle and slide in. It does run the risk of the consumer accidentally damaging something. Uh, so that is maybe the only truly meh thing about it. And then the only other thing that I wish it had some more option was the plate. The plate doesn't have many options for it, but the PCB supports all those options. So it's really just the plate. The plate could use some, some love in that regard, I guess. Ooh, that's a nice space bar. But I've already built one of these and I liked the way it sounded. But I built one, I believe, with an aluminum plate. And it was a bit... Aluminum top mount's a little bit too sharp for my ears. It's more of a preference thing. So I, I kind of tamed it with some polyfill as well as using... Um, the same idea of not putting the mounting screw on the space bar. Hold on, I'm trying to find the control key here. One moment while I find that, guys. Are these Gatoron Oil Kings? Yep, they are. I decided to use Oil Kings today. I was going to use long pole switches, but I just felt that long poles aren't... A like, I don't know, I, I kind of feel like long poles are fantastic, but I also don't love using them all the time. Because long poles kind of also have this very similar soundstage. Sir, Lance, a lot. Thank you very much for the tier one. Appreciate you, dude. Where's the caps at? Am I missing the caps lock for my Mizu set? Hmm. Is this right here? Never mind. I'm not missing it. I'm just blind and put it out of the box. I love how you say it's similar. Oh, do I say it the same way as you? <clears throat> Poor Mizu. It was beautifully on this Suse. Now it's not. Truly one of the doggiest of doo doo moose. Or movies? Man, how did I get roped into this again, guys? <laughs> how did I get roped into this? Seven, eight, nine. 
we're just that good. Yeah, you guys are. This might take longer than normal to build. So I have to put the caps on so I have to sort through them all now. So be patient with me, okay? Ooh. Okay, I don't want to spoil it for myself, but I'm, I kind of like this more than the long pull build. God damn. Nice badge. Alice, is it pronounced aluminum or aluminium? I know exactly what you're trying to say. I think I accidentally say it both ways. We'll get it done for you guys. What mounting style is this? It's just classic top mount. Like very, very standard, easy top mount keyboard. Which, you know what? In my opinion, is a very, very nice sound signature if done right. But you have to do it right. Or else it can be a little bit metallic-y or just kind of sound too loud and kind of have this weird echoiness to it. No, see, like I'm, I'm personally partial to not using aluminum with my. Uh... Is the Fuji done? Uh, this legitimately looks so ass, dude. You guys are the one who wanted it, okay? You guys said do split, so I'm doing it. I knew this was gonna look bad. Uh, so different, different mounting styles. Let's go through those. You have your classics. We have the classic, the almighty, integrated plate. Nobody does that in the hobby anymore because it legitimately is fucking ass. And I'm so glad nobody does it in the hobby anymore. Oh. Shh, it's okay, I put it in the wrong spot. Uh, integrated plate is pretty much a dead mount and God bless it is. It should never come back. It's terrible. There's no reason to go integrated plate. Uh, another mounting style that's pretty popular is um, well, Actually, we'll talk about the dead ones. I Guess sandwich mount would be another dead one. That's pretty pop. Like I mean, I feel like that was it has its like firm believers that who people who really like sandwich mount so sandwich mount uh, Actually, let me explain integrated plate is when the plate is part of the top frame it is nasty sounding. It also is incredibly, incredibly firm. Um, but then sandwich mount was another popular one. Sandwich mount is the plate gets sandwiched in between the two halves of the case. It's a, it's just a, in my opinion, pretty, like, I don't know. There, it has, again, it has its core audience, I feel, like the three people who still like that mounting style. But it's pretty awful. It offers no uh, vibration reduction at all of like, you know, like the vibrations of you typing. It sounds pretty bad. Yeah. Burger mount is top mount. So sandwich mount is sandwich mount. Burger mount is just putting gaskets on top mount. But then we'll talk about the next pop more popular one, which is tray mount. Tray mount is when you screw the plate directly into the bottom of the keyboard. It's usually a one piece assembly of the keyboard. That's to help cut down on some of those costs. Um, tray mounts are underrated. And I think in more recent times, people are starting to realize that tray mounts are underrated because tray mounts can offer a wide variety of ways that you can build your board. I think tray mounts are pretty awesome. After that, you would have a top mount. Top mount is what we did today. It screws into the top part of the frame. Top mount can sound really good. Um, I, I even like burger mounting my top mounts, so it's putting a gasket or some sort of O-ring in between the top frame and the plate. I've always liked it, it's pretty good. But top mount tends to have a more full sound to it. And it's also very loud in a lot of cases, which some people really prefer. Another really popular mount is gasket. I think gasket's pretty much the standard. Uh, gasket mounting is when your plates have tabs on them and then you cover those tabs with gaskets. That should isolate the plate and PCB assembly away from the rest of the case, uh, thus allowing you to have almost no feedback or vibration when you're typing on a keyboard. Um, in some cases, some people use 
the gasket mounts to also create some more flex or bounce inside them. So that's another thing you can do. Um, thermal my beloved. Thermal is technically a sandwich mount, but it's, it's done in a way where you don't feel it. The next thing, uh, there's so many different types. Oh yeah, and guys, there's even so many different types of gaskets, even tray mount. I, I'm not even gonna scratch the surface what, what, what uh, people have done with tray mounts. There's different variations and different plays on a lot of things. This is just a brief synopsis on it. Um, leaf spring is like a play on gaskets too. So tons of different ways you can do a ton of things in this hobby. I think I'm covering majority. I don't think I'm missing any. Was I missing any in that? Kind of lost place. The Envoy is technically a tray mount. Music's on and off is crazy. Like bad way or good way. O-ring? Oh yeah, O-ring mounts, forgot about that. Gummy O-ring mounts. It's when you isolate the plate and PCB by putting an O-ring around it and you push it in. A friction fit is what it's called. Friction fit or O-ring or gummy O-ring, whatever you want to call, is actually quite nice. It's a very consistent take on like a gasket IMO and then uh, allows you to have that one piece construction of the case as well. In most cases, there are rules or exceptions to that rule as well, but it has a very bright and just very nice, I don't want to use the word airy, but it just feels very nice. Like it's, it's a very nice typing feel. It's a bit softer. Um, overall, big fan of it. Another variation of uh, mounts you can probably find and maybe really enjoy is something like the, Sal the Salvation does. Oh, Mr. Teehee types. Guys, Teha switched to a Mac Studio. That's actually crazy that he switched. I'm actually very proud of him. He's, he's no longer a Windows boy. Dude, so many issues today. You had other issues? I actually tuned out to go eat dinner and then I had to prep for my stream. New streamer got all this money. <laughs> He's like me. We both bought the base version of the Mac Studios. Because honestly, the other versions are way too pricey. Uh, Nathan, if you need help with the Mac stuff, let me know. Because I actually have some tips and tricks I can tell you that I've discovered over the last, like, what? Eight months of using this thing for streaming? I love the Apple system for, for that stuff. Ooh, this sounds good already. Hey, don't ask me what I'm doing with this keycap set. They voted for it splitting half-half. I think this looks pretty shitty, but it's okay. We'll just continue to deal with this. Uh, they go up to like 7,000. Yeah, studios can, I mean, okay. I don't know about Tejas because Teja got the M2 chip. His is the newer one. I have last year's version, which is the M1. I am completely content and satisf satisfied with the M1 chip. It is absolutely insane what the uh, Max can do. And I think the, the big thing, which Teha might notice, for me though, like I, I do a lot in this small room. I don't know how big Teha's new room is. Um, there's no noise from the Apple computers and dude, there's no sound that comes from those Apple computers at all. It is nuts. And it's great for like having it on and doing studio work and just not having to worry about it. Yeah, we're calling this Mento. Don't ask. Don't ask guys, because I couldn't tell you an answer. <clears throat> Biggest thing for me is heat. Oh yeah, I, I never, mine has never generated any heat that's noticeable. The next thing Teja has to get is the Mac Studio monitor though. I don't know what, uh, what display is using, but whew. Studio monitor is pretty sick. That is something I do not regret in buying. It is absolutely a delight. Yeah, I think we covered most of the, where we're talking about the different mounting styles of keyboards. I think truthfully, oh, you did, you did get one? Dude, aren't they sick? No, I didn't get the XDR. I'm not Matthew Encino level. I'm just like a few steps below that. Matthew can get the big one. I'm. I'm not quite there as a creator yet, you know? <laughs> I can just casually go drop like 5K on an XDR. I just got the regular one too. Yeah, me and you are new streamers, so makes sense. We haven't been around too long. 
My M1 uh, Pro, uh, MacBook Pro has yet to turn on its fans. Yeah, mine too. Never once. <laughs> There's fucking Matthew in there. Hey, Matthew, what's going on, dude? Matthew's like up here. We're like down here. Well, maybe Teja's like here. He excelled really fast as a new streamer. <laughs> oh, facts. Uh, you didn't get 360 no scoped? That's true. I did not get 360 no scoped. I did not. I agree. Y'all are top tier. <laughs> Thank you, Kim Winwin. I appreciate it. Uh, I am a crumb on the floor. Oh, don't say that. Nothing wrong with crumbs. I could be a crumb. I'm pretty much a crumb at this point. Uh, new streamer, but old man. That's actually true. Do you know anyone that has gotten 360? My dog loves crumbs. I like crumbs too. I am a crumb. If, if Kim, hey, listen to this. If, if Kim Lin Win is a crumb, what's smaller than a crumb? I am a single atom. All right. There's nothing wrong with that. We're all, hey, a very wholesome way to look at it. We're all crumbs that make one big cookie. <laughs> a quark. A proton. Guys, I can't find the fucking short shift here. This, this is part of the annoying part about having some of these cases sometimes is sorting through them. But I also hate having the GMK boxes, so it's something I'm willing to deal with. But I am struggling. Where's the short, is this it? Nope, that's not it. Where's the short shift? here why not i appreciate alex and making it wholesome this is the twist i needed i try my best if you're the, if we're a cookie then you're the chocolate chips what's your guys favorite cookie right now absolute favorite cookie there it is i've never had toffee chocolate chip Ginger molasses, those are pretty good. Classic chocolate chip, oatmeal raisin. And thank you again, Tao, for the raid. I really appreciate you, dude. Snicker dude. Ooh, snicker doodles are pretty good. I'm I'm uh kind of boring. Okay, guy outside. I really like um oatmeal, like it has to be a soft oatmeal chocolate chip. I'm not gonna say no, nothing in it. Oatmeal chocolate chip. I think those are one of my favorite cookies. But it has to be a little bit buttery, though, because that's kind of what makes it so good. All right. Fuji 65 V2. These are in stock. Um, the type of weight realistically should not make any difference here. They're, they're both the same, just one's PVD. These have, um, this is a carbon fiber plate, which is the plate that I truly recommend to use with this. And I'll show you guys what an aluminum plate sounds like. And then uh, this has nothing inside of it. There's no mods. You can use polyfill if you feel like it's a little bit uh, airy for you, I guess, if you want to call it that. Crumble cookies are a scam. What are crumble cookies again? This is carbon fiber, yeah. Carbon fiber and FR4, listen to me. They're basically the same, but don't tell nobody because people get upset when I say that. I think they're basically the same. I've, I've, I hardly notice a discernible difference between carbon fiber and FR4, personally. How dare you? I know. All right, let's see what this sounds like. We built this with Oil Kings. I lubed them, TX stabs. Uh, those have been modded with a little bit of dielectric grease and a little bit of 205G0. One little tweak I did not do to this, and I recommend for all the Fuji 65s, if you guys end up picking one up or just have one lying around that you still have to build, unscrew the screw underneath the space bar. Again, this is a slightly older keyboard, so it doesn't quite have some, I mean, even some of the new keyboards still do this, but top mounts realistically don't serve well when you have a, a mount right over here. It makes the, key, the, the press on this feel very, very hard, and it's very fatiguing to your thumb, um, as well as it sounds pretty ass, so. All right, let's see what this sounds like. 
little HJ test. Oops, what did I do here? I think I fucked something up. Hold on one second, guys. DN test. What happened to my space button? There we go. I pressed too hard to one side and I... plug it in and type. I actually really like this. This is a lot nicer than the aluminum. Hold on. Because I'll show you guys the aluminum here in a second because I actually have one of those built. The backspace I'm not like a huge, huge fan of. Maybe the back, maybe I do need to switch the mods out for a long pull. Although I like the space bar as is. I'll show you guys what it sounds like with the long pull switches on the aluminum plate now. So I haven't actually done the CF plate yet. This is my first time with it. Uh, just a little bit of 205. There's already oil on the Oil Kings. I do not recommend going insanely, you know, thick on a lube with this. But you know, this sounds pretty good. Like Alphas sound really nice. Maybe I'm not the biggest fan of the CF uh, mods on this particular unit. I think maybe I'd have to switch to a long pole because I want to hear a little bit more of that like loudness from it. I love the space bar. Space bar turned out sick. Now, here is basically the same build, uh, but with long poles and aluminum plate. And this thing's loud. These are neon switches, yeah. It's loud. <laughs> it's not my, like, listen, I'm gonna be honest. I don't quite love how loud this particular unit is, but I put this together to show you guys some differences. Uh, I actually really, like, this is my ideal. Again, I think I would probably swap out and don't be afraid to do this, by the way, guys. This is not like treason. Like, you're not going to go to jail for putting different switches in different things. Um, I've done this with my personal boards, too. Like, there are certain boards where I have different switches on different keys. Um, I'm probably going to end up swapping one, two, and three for long poles and leave the Oil King on the uh, space bar because I really like that. Yeah, going straight to jail. Then the neons might sound really good on like a polycarbonate plate, but basically this is built up the exact same way. I actually took out the polyfill from this um, just to show you guys. Looks like the board responds well to changes, good or bad, but it does um, more than I thought. Yeah, I mean like Desk Hero, there's nothing wrong with this particular unit. I think I saw a few people say they actually prefer the aluminum one, but I'm gonna be honest, it's a solid top mount keyboard. Can't really, I mean, it's a, uh, it's not hard to fuck up top mount, but I feel like when you do fuck it up, it's a pretty big fuck up. So I like this particular one more. This still sounds good. Like there's absolutely nothing wrong with this, but you can kind of hear like right here, you can hear the aluminum plate in action. See, you can hear some of that resonance. Where on the carbon fiber, it just sounds a little bit more, uh, has like a bit more bass to it, I'd say. So carbon fiber, in my opinion, and polycarbonate react for me, sound better in top mount config. And I think it's just having a little bit less of that aluminum sound. 
I think high pitched can be either perceived as a good thing or a bad thing. Um, but having a little bit less of the metallic noises for me makes a big difference in how I like my top mount keyboards. So top row versus mid row combo. So I like having that balance between some of the bass and can, you know, I like having a more flat curve. This is in stock, yeah. Actually, the mods sound really, like I actually quite like the mods of the aluminum. I kind of prefer the space bar here though. Eh, I don't know which one I like more for space bar. I think this, this has a bit more bass to it but I do like the backspace enter and the shift more on this guy. Hard to tell, I haven't really decided which one I like more. But that's kind of like, I mean, that's the cool thing about having these custom keyboards. And this kind of illustrates a great point because I've never actually had the opportunity to do side-by-side -side boards like this. It's, it's very rare that I get to do something like this, unless I have multiple of them, like the envoys and stuff of, like that. But, um, it's a good showcase in what different things can sound like and how drastic a difference is. Some people think that these differences just don't exist. So we will ship these in priority as well. Yes, Desk Hero also told me that as well. These are a priority for them. So if you guys end up ordering them, they're gonna prioritize the orders. Really? I'm not surprised. I'm, I'm genuinely not surprised the carbon fiber is uh, not as high pitch. What's the difference? Which one are you giving? Sorry. Uh, this is aluminum, oh sorry, These, this is aluminum and long poles. This is carbon fiber and oil kings, which I don't think oil kings are long poles if I remember correctly. So I don't, I'm not surprised. I've always, I've always known that this has a different sound signature. I thought CF was always higher pitched than Alu. I, I don't know, I've never had that perception. Is that like a common perception people have with carbon fiber versus aluminum? I've always, when it comes to ranking of things, here, let me explain my thought, my thought process anyways. My thought process was, if you want the loudest and most metallic, I'm not gonna use the word high pitch. You go for brass. If you want, we'll, we'll call this one here brass. If you want the next up, it's aluminum. Then if you want something that has some of that same loudness, but doesn't have that same metallic -y noise, which is again, perceived as either a good or a bad thing. Then you go with FR4 or carbon fiber. Those two are interchangeable. So we'll put a little tab there just to show you that both of those FR4 and carbon fiber are basically the same. Copper, I would say is in between over here. It's like right here. And then if you wanna go with something a little bit more bassy, you go with your palm, we'll call this palm. And then you go with uh, PP, polypropylene at the bottom. Uh, polycarbonate and palm, I would say are right here inter interchangeable as well, to a certain degree. There's definitely differences between the two, but interchangeable. PP at the bottom, because I think PP has the, the basiest. But again, brass, copper, interchangeable, I'm kind of in between rather than interchangeable. Aluminum, then you got your FR4 and CF, then you have your PC and your, um, sorry, your PC and your palm, again, I'd say in between for palm, maybe, maybe not interchangeable. And then PP. Um, polypropylene and some of those plastic ones, I've, I've seen vendors just give up on trying to ship some of those. So sometimes it's polypropylene, sometimes, not all the time, even with palm. Different temperatures can shrink. And listen, this sounds funny, but the PP, <laughs> it has QC issues. It could either be bigger or smaller. The, I, I'm not joking around either. I'm not trying to make this funny, but uh, sometimes the PP can be too small because it shrinks or it could be a little bit too big because it, it, different temperatures affect PP different. I don't want to talk about this no more guys. I'm done talking about this. <laughs> I've, I've, if you guys recall, there's been a few times where I've had polypropylene plates and I've had to use a hair dryer to, uh, to warm it up because it's, it's shrunk. So if your PP has QC issues, you should go to the doctor. So I don't really fuck around too much with PP no more because uh, polypropylene is just, 
It's a hassle of a material. I just don't care about it no more. If it's too big, drop it in cold water. <laughs> don't warm your pee pee with air dry. Hey, listen, we're not talking about that kind of pee pee, right? I don't fuck around with pee pee too much anymore. <laughs> is this a keyboard stream? We're talking about polypropylene, the short form for his PP, but no one here is, no one here takes it serious. All right. Inverted PP so frustrating, hot tub streamer. Okay guys, Kenny, come on bro. We're not adults, man. You know what's fun? It's fine if we're a little bit childish sometimes. It's fine. <laughs> can't, you can't be uh, in, a, in adult mode all the time. But yeah, what do you guys think? Which one do you guys prefer? Do you guys prefer the Alu Long Pole, or do you guys prefer this combo, which is um, Oil Kings on Carbon Fiber? Really, Alu Long Pole? I think it does sound a bit harsh for my liking. Everyone's different though. I'm basic, I like Alu Long Pole. That makes sense. Everyone's a little different. But I think the board still holds up after what, two years after it being released? I think it holds up fine. Like I said, I think there's some design choices in which I don't quite agree with. Like I don't like the fact, again, we'll just reiterate and rehash this. Um, I don't like the fact that when you install the board, you have to angle it in to insert the USB-C into its slot. I've seen other boards do this in the past. No one really does it anymore just because it's dangerous for the USB-C, but it is what it is. Can't, obviously can't change that now. It's an in-stock unit and it's an older group buy. Um, the quality of the PVD was fine. I've manhandled mine a little bit and I've also, there's a bunch of dust on mine now, but it's totally fine. There's no rippling at all, which is usually the, uh, the telltale sign of a, a PVD being not good. And then I kind of prefer this though, like this kind of style. I think it looks nicer. But I think uh, Desk Hero also wanted me to show the interchangeable bottoms here because I think he's selling some in different colors. So we'll do that quickly too. Oops, wrong button. Where's my screwdriver? I used a combo of Mizu and Bento. <laughs> which the chat has dubbed, it's called Mento now. Alex, can you manhandle me like that keeb? Huh? I keep thinking it's a bird. Oh, I kind of see what you're thinking of. Like these are the bird's legs and that's its wings and that's kind of its beak. I kind of see what you're saying. My brain did not go to that at all though. God damn, that's a, that's a creative mind. Do you guys see that? Can you guys like understand what they're saying? A Gundam antenna? Wouldn't a Gundam antenna be like this? Like this way, not this way. Again, I, I did have polyfill in this at one point because I did feel like it helped the harshness of the aluminum plate, but I don't have it at the moment. Like, where'd that last screw go? <clears throat> Datu, thank you so much for the tier one. I really appreciate you, dude. It's supposed to be a silhouette of Mount Fuji, but I see it. I see the mountain more than I see anything else. Alu top mount can feel like you're typing on a brick. It's definitely a slight bit firmer. I'm gonna be, again, completely transparent. I think both have the same type of firmness to them. You might find yourself a little bit more fatigued in the long run using an aluminum top mount. But top mount is top mount and I feel like both of it, CF and aluminum can be quite rough to type on if you're not used to a stiffer typing experience. Nashville meetup is tomorrow. Oh baby, Geoff's gonna be there. Let's go dude. All right, there's one. That one went really easy. So these are some of the combos that, uh, I can't remember if it's like white top and black bottom or black top and white bottom. I don't remember which Desk Hero did. But it's actually kind of cool using the two. Actually, this looks kind of nice. I kind of like that. Neat. 
I did F4 top mount with heavy tactiles. Yeah, I don't know if I don't know how I, I would personally even feel about that. Tactiles are very, I, oh, dude. I'm very biased with uh, tactiles. I feel like with tactiles, I have to use aluminum or brass. I I do not like tactiles on a FR4 plate. Like, really don't. I don't know about how you guys feel about it, if you guys have ever tried that. It just doesn't sound right to me. Tactiles are an FR4 of my shit. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that totally, everyone's different. Um, For me, it just sounds thin. I just, I've never liked tactiles on that. Like, I need the metallic-y, I need that, like, that oomph of having a, um, like, a, a metal plate, basically, with my tactile switches. There's something different about it, you know? Maybe it has something to do with a firm typing experience as well. I'm not too sure. Again, we're all a little different. That's the beauty about the keyboard hobby, by the way. Not everyone's gonna have the same opinions, and that's wonderful. If we all had the same opinions, what a boring hobby this would be. Truly. That's what people don't understand sometimes about the, the keyboard hobby. The Shadow X I bought is a gasket mount board. Uh, I believe PC on it sounds really nice, very deep and round. Shadow X. I haven't heard of that one before. Actually, I may be building a, I'm not gonna name the name of the keyboard, but I hope and I. God damn. Oh my God. Datu, thank you so much for 10 tier ones. Thank you, Datu, I really appreciate that. You didn't have to do that, I really appreciate it, dude. Oh man, that's very kind to you. Thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. <clears throat> I love hearing your combos though. Helps me expand my thinking. Not that it sounds any different, but cool combo. Everyone enjoy my raise. Oh, you got a raise, congratulations. Very, very big congrats. Time for the sound test here. I'll do another little sound demo for you guys. So this Fuji 65 is the carbon fiber plate, oil king. Here, we'll just go from the side here. And this is the aluminum plate with long pull switches. I like both. Again, I'm probably gonna end up swapping these three keys for long pull. So I feel like they're a bit softer in the carbon fiber top mount and I'm not really 100% into that. But I think overall, I kind of enjoy the alphas and space bar from this board personally more. But I mean, I see a lot of people saying they actually really like the aluminum. So, I mean, good for everyone who likes different things. We're all different here. Uh, lamp, long pole boys sound good, but they all sound the same. Yeah, long poles tend to blur together. Yeah, the board is definitely bright enough as it is. Fuji sounds so good. I don't know why it sounded mediocre when the board was somewhat fresh. I must say this even from my personal experience of building keyboards. As I start to understand more and more of what parts work better with different mounts and, um, oh my God, Angel. What do you mean they sound all the same? Okay, dude. Um, as I start to understand parts more, I start to kind of get what works better with certain things. You know what I mean? So I think maybe back when this first came out, like I never built this back when it first came out, but I probably would have opted for something like, I don't know, aluminum and tactiles. And then maybe I wouldn't have lubed things correctly. Like, I mean, it was two years ago. That's definitely like a, um, a uh, what's it called? Long time at this point here. But like, I don't know. I kind of do feel like it, you kind of have some experience with what you like and your preferences 
But yeah, I do kind of agree though. I feel like when this board first came out, people who built it, I, I also thought it was kind of meh. That's why when Deskuro sent this to me, I actually built one way ahead of time because I'm like, I'm like, is this going to be meh? Uh, so it wasn't though. It was actually pretty good. I even messaged him like, it's actually pretty good. I, I, I remember this being not that good. I, I've been in the hobby for about four years. Four, four years at this point. Hey guys, stop arguing chat. <laughs> I'd love to see a video uh, on that from you, man. You experienced about how good combo, I, I would think a, maybe even like a Twitch, oops, Twitch stream on that would be, like unplug my headphones. <clears throat> I remember this being very pretty, but not sounding good. I don't know, I think both combos sounded pretty good in these tests here today. Um, the Oil Kings are stock, believe it, or sorry, the um, neon switches are actually stock. I did not mod these. They come pre-lubed, I believe. Actually, did I mod these? Okay, I can't recall if I opened these up because this was two months ago. I'm pretty positive I left these stock though because they were pretty good stock. Yeah, I'm pretty positive I left these stock because these were pretty decently lubed. Uh, but this I, this I did lube. Oil Kings are too inconsistent for me to leave stock. This is aluminum. The black one was aluminum. The white top was uh, polycarb, or not polycarb, uh, carbon fiber. Um, do you know what the king, what the king of stock switches is? Anything from Athleon. But even Athleon has issues. There's no perfect pre lube switch. There's none. I have not experienced a pre lube switch yet that I've been like, yo, this is absolutely outstanding. So I have, uh, I have not liked, I have not had one that's been like, yeah, th th yes, this has been extra consistent every single time I've used it. Uh, but Athleon is the closest that's come to that. I love the runner switches. They are all perfect, but Athleon does a good job. I agree. Have you tried Laguna Blues? Who man used those, Moose? Uh, Hamu and Bison make some banger stock switches. Have I tried Hamu switches yet? Athleon switches, wait, I've tried Hamu, but I don't think I've tried Hamu pre-lubed. Athlon switches are heckin' uh, big. The last time I purchased Athlon switches into it, oh, yeah, they definitely have a little bit of, of an annoying tolerance to them too. Uh, I have not tried those new BCPs yet. I need to order some. Are they still around? Like, can I buy them? Laguna Blues. I'm gonna look this up quick. Let me plug in the keyboard. I actually don't know what Laguna Blues look like. Laguna Blue. Switches. <laughs> um, I haven't tried these. Maybe I'll pick some up. Guys, why do these seem expensive? How much do you get for a pack here? It, does, it, does it say how much comes in one pack? Oh, packs of 35. Okay, that's not terrible, I guess. Maybe I'll pick one up. The Flower Shadows actually had pretty good stock lube. I did have to go through all of them though. And for the most part, I did add a little bit of lube on some of them. And then some I just spread around the lube that was already pre-existing. Um, so some were better than others. Again, not perfect, not completely consistent. Unikey sells B-Sun in packs of 10. I need to find a Canadian vendor who sells those switches. The quietest switch I've ever used Okay, quietest might be the silent switches from Cosfox, but I prefer the feeling of the ones from Hamu, the heartbeats. They're not as quiet as the one from Cosfox. I don't remember the exact name of the ones from Cosfox. I tried it at a meetup and I was like blown away because I, I couldn't hear a damn thing. And it was, it was quiet in there too. Um, but the Hamu heartbeats are the nicest feeling ones. Anthro anthracites, the keycaps, yeah, I've tried them. What about geckos? I don't remember geckos. I don't think I've ever tried those. Quietest non-silent switch and loudest. Oh, if you want, if you want like a switch that just is like low-key dead sounding, uh, anything that has uh, the unwipe stems. If you find an unwipe stem switch, my those will sound super super light. Ly stems can also sound pretty light too. But I think unwipe is like 
fuck, they're damn near silent. Like, it's it's like a, a not fun silent. You have to find the right combo for Unwipe to shine. But in most cases, Unwipe's boring. Uh, it's really it's really light. Like there's not much noise that happens with them. And then loudest switch. Uh, the Wu Chase switches. They're pretty loud. I would say Wu Chase switches are probably one of the loudest and still smooth because they have some stock lubricant on them. But yeah, those those are probably my two answers there. Uh, my Gat Unknowns lube sound like Quiet Cherry. Yeah, they're really low. Onion switches are great. I, low key, I really like onions. I think I sent a pack of onion switches to Angel. I wonder if he ever used those. Love my WS onions. Your combo insights uh, stream video would be amazing. Yeah, we can we can go through them. Did you ever use those, Angel? I don't know if you put those on a board or not. I'm unsure. I did indeed. What board did you put them in, Freya? No. Hell yeah, dude. I'm building a client for you soon. I'm so excited. I'm gonna have Angel on stream with me that day. He's gonna be in call. Uh, he's gonna show me how to build it because I don't. I'm. I need. I need his expertise. How similar are the Nixies to Roses? Oh, they're very different. Very, very different. I would not even put them in the same category. Uh, Nixies have a very different sound signature overall from Roses, as well as Roses are extremely smooth when lube and then. Nixies have a certain scratch to them and have a, I would say a little bit of a deeper sound signature to them as well. Dude, JWK Moss switches are actually kind of sick. I have them in this bag. They're in this. I don't want to show you this board because it's super dusty, but they're in the, they're in the Mizu. Um, Popu switches versus Nixies. I don't, I haven't tried Popu switches, but OP blacks are, I don't know. They're okay. They're just cherry switches. Wait, OP blacks are cherry, right? Or Yeah, they're cherry. No, they're not. I don't remember what OP Blacks are. I've used them for a client. I don't own any. Uh, the JWK? Then they're, okay. Then actually it's different. Sorry, my mistake. I'm misremembering things. If it's JWK, they're very different from Nixies. Uh, OP Blacks do not sound like Nixies. I've tried them for a client. Fuck, my, my remembering of them is they're still very smooth. Nixies have a certain friction to them that are a bit scratchy that you cannot, like, it does not get replicated in most of the JWK stuff. I would not say they're close to it at all. There's a very particular sound from Cherry Switches. Um, oh, the PLX? That's a nice looking board. I have not tried those switches. The next switches I'm gonna be trying, I need to put a big list, but I did order some other switches. I think I was looking at, oh God, it was, um, who was it again? Was it Mino Keys that had the switches that I was gonna pick up? Let me see. There's a whole bunch of switches I wanna try, but dude, it gets expensive ordering all these things. No, it wasn't Mino, it was someone else. Someone has like a certain switch that I wanna try. There's some, dude, there are so many switches. I feel like even if I try one new switch a week, it's not enough. I'll never get through them. There's just too many. The creams were nice. I like cream pluses and I also, I actually, I have one batch of NK creams left that I should use. Pock is a material not a switch. Oh, okay, I didn't know that. Yeah, maybe I tried them, I just didn't realize. One new switch per switch stream. Yeah, I don't, I don't know, man, too many. You need to try a switch like every 12 hours to keep up. I agree with that, Alcorn. All right, guys, that's pretty much the stream. If you guys were interested in picking up Desk Heroes uh, Fuji over here, um, oh, sorry, not Desk Heroes, but the Fuji, uh, Desk Hero has them. Again, this was, Desk Hero was kind enough to send these out so I can try them. Um, very grateful that Desk Hero is also one of the stream sponsors, if you guys didn't know. I know I mention it sometimes, but. Desk Hero's been around for a long time. They're one of the, they're one of the vendors I've actually had done business with for the longest time ever in the hobby. Uh, because Desk Hero used to be Hivemind Cables, which was an audio company. They still, have, I think Desk Hero still has audio gear on his website. But if you want to talk about long-standing vendors, I've literally shopped from them before I was into keyboards. So <laughs> he's been around a while. 
Uh, I got like 90% of my caps from them. Yeah, they're fantastic. Great Canadian vendor. All right, though, guys, that's pretty much the stream today. I'll be taking some pictures of these in the Mento config that you guys made me use. I'll post this on Instagram in the Mento config. What a stupid name. I love it, though. I love you guys. Mento. This is Mento. We're going to start doing this more often. Now, if you guys do split votes, which I hope you guys don't, we'll do this more often. Uh, enjoy the rest of your sat Saturdays. Raid Bandit Tree? Yeah, we'll definitely raid Bandit Tree. Is that his actual username or is it something else? Because if I type in the wrong thing, it raids the wrong person. Or is it something else? Oh, please stop talking, Alex. Bandit, Bandit. Do you guys have a link to Bandit's stream? I don't see him online. Huh. Why don't I see him? There's actually a lot of people building keyboards right now. There's L Customs, Asley Streaming, Clackbait. Oh, there's Bandit. Thank you, Shonis. I appreciate you. Uh, okay. Let's go raid Bandit. I'm going to go chill out for the rest of my Saturday here. I am not going to be online at all tomorrow, guys. Like, I don't even... I think maybe a little bit in the morning I'll be doing some emails. But tomorrow I am actually going to go do a photo walk. I really, really want to get outside take some pictures with my camera before I get too cold. <laughs> so I, I really want to do that, dude. Um, so tomorrow I'm not going to be available. Then Sunday we're doing probably two builds, oddly enough. I think I might do a double build on Sunday. So... I'll talk to you guys later. Appreciate you guys as always. Love you guys. And I'll um, see you guys Sunday. Peace out, everyone. Enjoy Bandit's stream. Bye.